Hello, welcome back to the channel. It's been a little bit of a while since I made a YouTube video, but super pleased to be back in the swing of it. And this video is a celebration. So if you're new to the channel, well, we just hit 1,000 subscribers, which is like mind blowing to be honest, considering I started well, properly doing YouTube about maybe like six or seven months ago, like seriously. Now we're at 1,000 subscribers and I think the time of making this video, we're almost at like 1200, 1300 too. So yeah, like things are doing really, really well. And in this video, as part of that celebration, I thought I would answer all the different questions that you guys sent in for me on Instagram, Twitter, and on the community tab, just answering questions about my life, my YouTube channel, and working at Google. So let me grab the iPad and answer your questions. All right. I've got the iPad with the questions on, so let's start. And we're gonna start with the YouTube focused questions. And actor asks, what's one thing you wish you knew before starting on YouTube? And what's the best thing that's come out of starting a channel? And yay, congrats. Thanks, actor. What's one thing I wish I knew? I think I wish that I knew just how hard it was to grow on YouTube, continue to make videos, stay focused and just like keep the content production cycle going and the fact that it really doesn't come easy that would be the like one thing i think people say like youtube themselves and creators perhaps make it look easy right because uh it looks like everything is sorted but i think the one thing i wish i knew is that hey it's not as easy as it looks and there is a lot behind the scenes Without the team, I wouldn't be able to make half the videos I did. And yeah, it just requires a lot of effort and a lot of time before any real return starts to happen or money starts to happen. What's the best thing that's come out of starting my channel? 100%, no question of doubt in my mind here. The best thing is the creators that I've met whilst creating on YouTube. Some of the best friends that I have and speak to regularly now are YouTube creators. And it's also just really good to have an understanding of like how they're doing, their struggles. And also just like YouTube's a journey, right? It's not something that happens within a few months or a few weeks or overnight. It takes years. And it's so good to have friends who are on that journey um, with you too. Awesome. Ruben asks, what are the first steps you took in your YouTube journey? And what's the best decision you've made concerning your YouTube channel? And what was the last YouTube channel you subscribed to? First steps I took in my YouTube journey was basically just uploading. <laughs> like, it sounds so dumb. Like, oh, what's the first thing you did on YouTube? Upload videos. Duh. <laughs> but just sitting here in front of a camera and just filming something and uploading something is honestly the best first step that I could recommend to anyone. It doesn't matter how good the quality, if it's on your phone, if it's on a camera, if it's a vlog, if it's a sit down video, it doesn't matter. The comfortableness on the camera is so important. And I think the first steps just like film your video, edit your own video, upload, go through the whole process yourself and do that like for a few weeks just to get into a rhythm. That's a really good first step. Um, I would also kind of decide on the content that you want to create and the audience you want to target, but I haven't even figured that out now, so. Yeah, uh, there we go. I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh. What's the best decision you've made concerning your YouTube channel? 100% hiring a team. Like just the core small team that we have now is so, so useful to just be able to take like a little weight off myself and actually ensure that videos still get made and edited and the captions that you see are actually written. Check out the pop-up banner here to see more about the team that I hired and what they do for the business. The channel that I recently subscribed to is by a guy called Jeff Marshall. And if you live in London, you'll probably know Jeff's content. And I subscribed to him recently because he makes a lot of content about trains uh, and like transit content in predominantly London, but also the rest of the UK too. Um, and he's covering the new Elizabeth line that opened on TFL in the last week or two. Um, and so he's making content about every single 
tube station on the Elizabeth line. And if you live in London, the Elizabeth line is quite an exciting thing. So I subscribe to Jeff's channel and I've watched quite a few of his transport videos. They're just quite fun and different and it's not like the normal content that I would watch on YouTube. So nice to have a bit of variety, right? Gabriel, who is absolutely crushing it on TikTok, asked me, what motivates you to keep creating on YouTube? I think what motivates me to keep creating on YouTube versus other platforms or just creating on YouTube in general is I think the opportunities that can come from YouTube are just significantly greater than any other platform that I've seen. With TikTok, you can obviously grow like pretty quickly and you can get some brand awareness. And there is, to be fair, people on TikTok who have been creating content and have now starred in like Netflix dramas, for example. But I think YouTube just provides better opportunities, both in terms of like revenue potential. So like YouTube just has ad revenue completely figured out. And also just, I feel like the people who follow you on YouTube, watch a lot of your content, generally. People who follow me or subscribe to me on YouTube, I should say, um, I think generally are a little bit more like vested in me as opposed to someone is on TikTok. And so people are a little bit more curious on the kind of things that I'm up to um, and what I'm doing versus TikTok, which is a lot more kind of quicker videos. And so I think what motivates me to keep creating on YouTube is just the potential that I know it has and working with creators and brands in my day job who are all creating um, or making kind of advertising on YouTube, the potential that I think YouTube has as a platform is still massively untapped. Um, and so I think me as a kind of part-time creator, I want to be a part of that, I think. And I think it's exciting to have something that you do on the side um, where you can kind of document your life. And I think that's probably where the channel will end up focusing. Um, just what I'm doing in my life, reflecting on decisions I've made and maybe like documenting some side hustles or startups that I'm working on. There's a little tease for you. Um, oh, what a life, nice little feeding question from Topher. What do you want the next two, five, ten years to look like for your channel? What systems do you have or want to put in place to get you to those milestones you're after? What do I want the next two, five or ten years to look like? I think that I want the next two years to look like a focused channel in the sense of like, it'd be nice if the channel was a little bit more niche focused. I think that would be really good in the next two years that you could look at this channel and be like, ha, huh, I follow Charles because he gives me feedback, advice, tips, insight on X. Where it's really good to watch him because he's documenting this startup journey and that's really interesting content. Um, I think that'd be good. In five years, it would definitely be good for, I would say YouTube to be like a core part of like revenue or like a core part of like the marketing strategy for a business that I'm running. Maybe that could also be two, two years too, to be honest. Um, but I think five years really solidifies it in like a revenue generating, audience building uh, and just like, I still hopefully like a fun endeavor to be working on. Um, 10 years, goodness knows. Uh, I think 10 years, I don't know if I ever see myself as a full-time YouTuber, you know? I think that's an interesting an interesting concept. I don't know if I ever see it for myself, but maybe, maybe that could be 10 years. And the systems that I wanna put in place or that I have, we have a really good system structure built in on Notion actually and we have a really good like mapped out lucid chart of who does what in the process um, or actually like start to finish of a video. But I think we potentially don't use the system like well enough. Like usually it's me who's the bottleneck or the, the like break in the system. But I think, yeah, I think we need to have a little bit more processes in place, which is like, okay, when this happens, you know, on Notion, maybe it automatically tags someone on Slack or something like that. We have a lot of these processes in place, but I don't think we use them enough. Um, and I think we should. I think that will help a lot. Um, thanks, Tofa. Monica asks, of all the things I've tested, what gave me the most growth and highest leverage? Thumbnails, probably, I would say. Like, 
there are particular thumbnails that we've done on the channel and we've like made a conscious effort to do like a really strong job of making really good thumbnails. Um, so like for example, one of those was the like Lisbon video. So what it was like to live in, in, in Lisbon and like my honest thoughts of doing that. I made a really conscious decision about that thumbnail and that video is one of the best performing videos on the channel. So I think having that video and then purposefully targeting like YouTube browse so on, on the feed, like people aren't necessarily searching for the title and the content of that video. They may well be, but I think just, you know, showing up in people's feeds of people who are maybe looking to move to Lisbon or move to Portugal or live there some point in their life, I think was a good, um, a really good thing. So I think we really did a really good job with that video. So testing thumbnails, we used Shebody for A-B testing, 100% really, really good strategy. Um, Sushi asks, um, well she says, congratulations, very happy for you first, so thanks Sushi. Um, what is the video you're most proud of and why? And being a Googler, has it made your YouTube journey easier or harder? Okay, so forgive me Sushi, but I'm gonna say two videos here. I think one of the videos that I'm most proud of is actually one of the videos that's not done very well at all on the channel, which is like a day off in Gozo as a digital nomad. The reason I'm most proud of this video is it was probably the first time I really embraced being outside of my comfort zone in like a lot of vlogging in public. Even though it was with the DJI like Pocket 2 and it wasn't like a massive camera, I still think that was like a big deal for me to like vlog so much of a day in public and kind of just be okay with that. And also that day was just like, honestly such an enjoyable day that I spent like with Will and Finn that it kind of, for me, it didn't really matter if that video didn't do well or not. Like I had such a good time filming that video and I now have that memory like immortalized in video. And I think I'm super, super proud of that video. And you know, the other video that I probably say I'm super proud of is Probably the what people don't tell you about living in Lisbon video, the one that I was just talking about. I think just because we spent so much time and effort on that video, the opener for that video, and the thumbnail for it, that I'm just so proud of the fact that the effort was shown and the results of that of that content. Yeah, I really enjoyed filming that video, and I think we did a really, really good job of it, and I'm just so glad to see that it came out and was reflected. Um, so yeah, they'll be the ones that I would say I'm probably most proud of um, today. Um, being a Googler, has it made your YouTube journey easier or harder? Hmm. I would say it's made it slightly, slightly easier. Um, the reason I say it's slightly easier is because I obviously knew that I could make content about Google and you know, people are generally quite interested in content about, about Google and then live content and there's not that much of it on, on, on YouTube. But I think like aside from that, just having a little bit of insight into the platform where YouTube is kind of like caring about um, what you should kind of do more of or less of, just having a very small insight into the platform itself and what YouTube itself cares about, I think has been, yeah, like just useful to understand that and then translate that into like a creative point of view. Um, but yeah, only slightly. I don't really have any major advantages over literally anyone else. It's just a little bit of insight into the platform and just being able to make content about YouTube and, and Google itself, I would say. Next up, Mike. Uh, who says, congrats Charles, well deserved, way to crush it, happy for you. Thank you so much, Mike, really appreciate it. I saw your content is crushing too. Do I have any dream collabs, milestones, or opportunities from YouTube, and if so, what are they? Yes, I definitely do. So I think the way I would kind of group this is, so I don't have like a specific opportunity in mind, but it would be really good, and I think I would really enjoy doing like a big, high profile speaking or, uh, like presenting or being part of like uh, like, a, like a documentary or like a drama or something like that on like a big broadcaster like BBC or Channel 4 or like Netflix. I think being able to like just meet loads of people, 
whether it's kind of like an interview thing, whether it's like hosting some kind of like show, maybe it's for kids TV, maybe it's like daytime TV on like this morning or something. I don't know. I think I would find that like really fun. So yeah, any kind of big public speaking, presenting, or kind of, I guess like maybe acting, although I don't know how good I am as an actor. There's only one way to find out. But like any kind of opportunity like that, I think would be like pretty amazing. Um, and yeah, I would say that would be that would be probably the biggest like milestone or, or, or dream kind of collab or thing that I would want to do. I think one big milestone that we as the business in terms of the YouTube channel have this year is actually for the YouTube channel to be self-sufficient. So what that means is there's obviously costs that it's associated with paying the team, costs for storing like the video content that we produce, for example and I want those costs to be like self-sufficient so that the YouTube channel can pay itself in ad revenue and affiliate revenue and all these kind of things. So that's the next big milestone. We're now monetized, which is great, but once we hit that milestone, that'll be really awesome. And I think I'll feel like I can take YouTube to the next level once it's kind of like self-sufficient. So that's a good mini milestone and then like a big presenting or public speaking opportunity would probably be like a dream kind of collab or thing that I would want to do in future for sure and I think YouTube can unlock a lot of those opportunities like I've seen it before kind of the guy on TikTok who now is starring in Afterlife on Netflix uh, you know it happened for him too right so definitely can happen for, for YouTubers all right penultimate question about YouTube that's me Sonny or May on Insta asks how do I stay consistent with YouTube in addition to working full-time very good question man when you figure out the answer to this please let me know yeah <laughs> uh how do i stay consistent i i mean i really i don't like if you look at the uploads for the channel it's it's semi consistent we tried initially to do two videos a week that's a lot two videos a week is a lot for anyone um and now we're trying to do one video a week as like a consistent thing going forward and then if we can try and do a couple of weeks where we have like two videos a week when we're really organized but I guess we're optimizing slightly more for quality versus quantity. There's no there's no wrong thing to do there. But I think that's kind of where we are at the moment. And how do I stay consistent? Strong team, weekly accountability buddy, weekly team meeting, uh, and we have a really good like notion set up and also a good like flow chart of understanding how a video is made and what parts of the process that a video may be stuck in. So yeah, building out the processes and having the team who help you stay accountable in the weekly meeting and in a weekly accountability buddy, they're the things that definitely help a lot. So yeah, shout out to Felix, my accountability buddy for helping with that. Um, <laughs> cool, last question about YouTube from Eric. When did you realize that the big bad covered in the back had to get out of the frame? As this very nice thumbnail where we have a plant now. Yeah, yeah, this is like a good setup, right? So this is my dedicated studio filming setup, whereas the cupboards is actually like where I work. So that desk is actually like where I work in the kind of like home studio that I have right now. Um, so that's where I'm actually working with my ultra wide monitor. So that was a bit easier. Like friction is the biggest issue when you're a YouTuber starting. So I think I just used that kind of area because it was the easiest and the, the least amount of friction. Um, when did I realize it? I did a Zoom call with uh, like some friends from Part-Time YouTuber Academy, Cohort One, that Ali's, like this basically Ali's course. And people were like, yeah, um, I think you should basically get rid of these cupboards <laughs> if you want to improve your setup and the look of the channel. So. The cupboards have not gone, I've just gone <laughs> to a different part of the studio to film. But uh, no, yeah, I think it's a much better setup now. Um, and we have these nice plants and we have this kind of nice stuff here. So yeah, I'm glad that people noticed the improvement anyway. Awesome. So next up we have a question from Cams Campbell, um, who asked me on Twitter, what was my first concert and best concert? This is quite a funny question actually, because I was thinking about this and I think I've only ever been to one concert, like one proper concert, I think. Um, and that concert was an Ed Sheeran concert in Wembley. Great concert, 
Um, it even had like Anne Marie as the like warm up act. And I think that's the only concert I've ever been to. Um, so I guess that's the first and the best concert. Um, so yeah, definitely need to up my concert game. That is for sure. So the next question we have is from Ruben. Thanks for the question, Ruben. Uh, he asked, what's the worst job I've ever had? So I think the worst job I've ever had only because the job was quite like arduous. Like I think the, the, the team and, and the company and the product is great, but I think the role was like tough. So basically, I think the worst job I've ever had was this sales like internship that I was doing at Ugly Drinks. And it basically involved me getting 24 cans, putting them in a, like a cooler bag backpack and going around London to like cafes, corner shops, restaurants, and basically getting them to sample the, the drinks and hopefully like placing an order of like four cases or 10 cases or whatever. I think that was probably the worst job I've ever had because it was probably the hardest job I've ever had. Like pure door to door, cold sales for a product that's quite hard to sell as well. Like it's not like you're just bringing out a new flavor of Red Bull. You're basically bringing out a new type of product to the industry that is filled with like sugary or sweetened drinks. Um, and when you're trying ugly drinks for the first time, you're a bit like, what is this? Because it literally has no sugar or sweetener. It's like good for you. So it's literally just flavored sparkling water. So the reaction from some of the corner shops who had some before and it hadn't sold wasn't super good. Um, and we gave out these like coupons in like Sainsbury's and things and got people to try it. And some people like, uh, yes, spat it out or like threw the cans at me and said, oh, this is awful or whatever. But I think it's just very much, you know, the taste that we as people in in like the uk um, and also the us are just like acclimatized to like having drinks like filled with sugar um so the product i think is good the team was also good but i just think the job itself was hard and if i didn't have my friend jamie who's like a really good friend of mine now if i didn't have him who was doing it with me at the same time yeah i think it would have been even worse so shout out to jamie thanks man a question from darren on twitter who asks me would you ever move to one of the Google offices in the US? Totally. Why not? Um, yeah, I think I'm in this period of my life where I could work from anywhere, you know? Um, obviously, visas permitting and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, totally would work in one of the Google offices in the US. Totally would work in any office in the US, not necessarily specifically to Google. Um, but yeah, like definitely open to doing some more traveling around for sure. Like I want to do some more digital nomad trips and i want to do some more uh like time where i'm in a month or two months in a different place so if you're still watching the video let me know in the comments any recommendations you've got of where i should travel to next so we then move on to a few questions that i got from instagram um and the first one is from eat with waza who's a guy called warren who i used to work with at coffin warehouse and this is a very interesting question can you please deliver donuts sure <laughs> Warren, if you want donuts, let me know and I'll order some donuts to your house or your work. I don't even remember saying anything about donuts on the, the story when I posted this, but yeah, Warren, if you want donuts, donuts you shall have. Mmm, donut. His next question is from Johan, and he asks me, do you work out a lot? Uh, I think this is because on Instagram, every now and then I've been posting like a story of me in the gym. Mostly so that I feel like there's a little bit of external social accountability um, So people can kind of see if I've been into the gym or not and like ask me how it's going progress updates So then it kind of makes me kind of feel a bit more consistent or a bit more motivated The answer is do I work out a lot? I work out three times a week in terms of weights and usually about one day a week of cardio um, and I do like a, a push pull leg split and then one day of cardio. So is that a lot? I feel like it's a decent amount. Um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily um, a crazy amount. So the next question is from um, Mears, which is my friend Emily. And the question is, if you had a horse, what would you name it? Good question, Emily. Uh, I would name the horse Gerald. 
No further comment. <laughs> uh, uh, Pradesh Gilly asked me on Instagram, is there any opportunities in Google for freshers? Yes, there is definitely opportunities at Google for freshers. You're probably, the best opportunity that you probably have is like a internship at Google. They also do have apprenticeships, but I assume freshers you're meaning like university. And I think you can do an internship between your first and second year or second and third year. You might need to double check whether that's correct. But there is definitely opportunities to work at Google whilst you're studying. And afterwards they also have like some kind of like grad scheme kind of thing as well. The last question is from Erm Mears, which is Emily. And she asks, where did you come, come from? from? Where, where did you go? go? Where, where did you come, come from, from Cotton Joe? No, she didn't ask that bit, but she did say, where did you come from? Where did you go? I guess, where did you come from? means like, where were you born? So I was born in Harlow in the UK, although my parents are actually from like Scottish heritage on my dad's side. Um, Mum is more like England, kind of like Suffolk based. Um, and where did I go? I went to school in Hertfordshire and I went to University of Nottingham. Um, so that's where I went and that's where I was come from. Uh, where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? I don't know. That's a lovely way to conclude this Q&A video. I had a ton of fun reading these questions, so thank you so much. If you are a subscriber to this channel, then also a big, big thank you. Thank you for sticking around. Um, and thank you for watching this video if you got through to this end bit here. Definitely check out any of these videos here on the channel to watch next. Otherwise, truly, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye-bye.